So you're writing about columns, and you've done this before. I mean, you've looked. You've, this is your That's second right. volume of going through these columns. So why did you decide to go after the scandals? These are the stuff of breaking news, Aaron. You yes. know that. These have always been the stuff of breaking news. Whether mm -hmm. people are newspapers in 1890 or online today, this is what gets people's attention. And when you look at the best of American columns, this is an American art form. And they really do. These columnists, these opinion makers, have these strong personalities. They're great storytellers. And they help make sense of the chaos of the world around us. So when you bring the best of the past in one book, it's great. Great reading, just as it was today. It's history in the present tense. It makes me just think about how different things used to be with newspaper columnists, and now you have this cacophony, right, of online commentary. You, you do, and that's one of the things we learned when putting together this book with Errol Lewis and Jesse Angelo, my mm -hmm. co-editors. You know, there's a real difference between the classic reported column of the past and kind of the online opinion today. What you realize is, is that those reporters in the past, they did reported columns. They told stories. They were storytellers first. They did their own reporting. They brought the characters out, the heroes and the villains, and they made things come alive. They weren't relying on television. It was vivid description of writing and that's why they read so beautifully today this is a book of short stories that really happened and so often the online journalists that I'm a part of uh, we, we're content to write our own opinions and too many folks don't get out from behind their desks and there's a real difference in the quality of storytelling we can learn a lot from these folks so what are your favorite columns in the book two in particular stand out Murray Kempton writing for the New York Post a column called the Southern Gentleman he interviews the most vicious racist you've ever met and he lets him hang himself he doesn't pass judgment. He lets him speak in his own words. In fact, he begins the column by saying, he describes this individual and he says, he's almost totally impossible to dislike. And, and that lack of judgment and letting a character speak for himself is a novelistic quality. It's a short story quality. And the other one that really stands out for this book, Damon Runyon on The Cinderella Man. Remember that movie a couple years ago, The Cinderella yes. Man? Yes. Russell Crowe, boxing drama. That's about James J. Braddock. Well, Damon Runyon gave James J. Braddock the nickname The Cinderella Man. But no one had ever anthologized that column before. The Boxing Hall of Fame didn't have it. The Damon Runyon Estate didn't have wow. it. We found it in the New York Public Library. So it's the first time that column has ever been anthologized. Well, that's great. So it's like your, your living history. And it's, it's history written in the present tense. And it's really a love letter to classic American journalism, a great American art form, the newspaper column.